Hello, it's Phil Harvey here from Light Reading, and we are at our studio booth in, on the show floor at Fiber Connect 2022 in Nashville, Tennessee. And joining me right now is Jeremiah Sloan. He is the CEO of Craighead Electrical Corp Cooperative Corporation. It's a mouthful. A little bit at the end yeah, just gets me each time. CECC, right? There we go. It's better? Okay. Yes. I saw, I saw that um, uh, sort of abbreviated in various places, so I think the company's comfortable with CECC. That's right. Um, but uh, you're, you're located in uh, uh, Northeast Arkansas, and uh, how long has the company been offering uh, uh, broadband or fiber to the home service to its uh, members? Sure. Uh, so thanks for having me, Phil. Excited sure. to be here today. Uh, looking forward to the chat. We started our broadband project in 2018. And we actually just celebrated 85 years on the electrical side, so got to celebrate that, throw that out there. Uh, but 2018, we began our, our fiber project, uh, specifically aimed at addressing internal needs. We needed to communicate with critical ele electrical infrastructure out on the grid. We had district offices that were hard to communicate with. Uh, so we started deploying fiber to fix that internal need, and then quickly realized that we had 44% of our membership who lacked access to 25.3. And so the project expanded to become a broadband project. Uh, so 2018, we strung our first fiber. 2019, we connected our first customer. Uh, fast forward to today, we built about 4,000 miles of fiber, and we have 13,000 subscribers, and roughly 25,000 uh, premises passed. Okay, excellent. busy. Yeah, very busy, and I, I've got so many questions on that part. Um, but when you uh, so so when you were originally assessed the need. Uh, 25.3 is what you were referring to was the uh, the downstream and upstream speeds the FCC is saying this is the minimum uh, you know broadband requirement right and you were saying how much of your uh, like like your uh, territory was was underserved at that time 44 percent and okay. that was that was based off of FCC form 477 data okay uh, from 2017 and we know that we've we all have different opinions on that data. I think that the need That's was actually greater than yeah. 44%. Okay. So there was a real opportunity to provide a service that our communities were starving for. Yeah, apparently. I mean, it's it's interesting too because I mean that's that's a um, uh, you know you they they were already taking electrical service from you. And how many counties or how many cities does this does your uh, territory cover? Just so we we serve clear. we serve eight counties predominantly. Okay. And that's about 32,000 meters. So okay. in terms of size, we're kind of right in the middle of the pack of the 17 uh, electrical cooperatives in the state of Arkansas. And, and just for the anybody who's not um, familiar with it, can you describe like how, how is getting electricity or services from an electrical cooperative different than, you know, from a normal uh, for-profit utility, right. telco, or that? Yeah, so, of. you know, our mission is our members. We're focused on the people who own our company. So as a cooperative, uh, it's a democratic process, but you become an owning and controlling member of the company and you elect a board of directors who oversees uh, me and the operation of the business. So okay. uh, ultimately at the end of the day, if there's any uh, positive margins at the, at the end, we can reinvest those in operating and maintenance of the system, or we have to return them to the member. And so okay. we actually just completed a capital credit event last week where we returned $2.4 million to our membership. Uh -huh. We do that every year that we have positive margins. And that's, that's a nonprofit model right. um, that cooperatives follow. Okay, and the ISP that you run is called Empower Broadband. That's the the internet service yeah. portion. Now, you like is, it? Is it uh, a good name? Oh, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'm signing off on that. Now, is the uh, is the uh, predominant connectivity type that you're offering? Is it all fiber to the home or all fiber based? Yeah. So when we started the project, because we were focused on critical electrical infrastructure, we were deploying fiber in a way that didn't immediately build fiber to the home connectivity. Okay. So we, we actually rolled out some fixed wireless, okay. uh, fiber fed um, wireless nodes, uh, 5G technology, LTE based technology. Uh, but our construction outpaced uh, our initial expectations. And so we actually uh, kind of mothballed the fixed wireless project and just went full fiber to the home because of how quickly we were constructing that fiber. Okay, the construction part, because I uh, earlier today, or earlier in the show, we, in, uh, we talked to render networks. They, they list you as a customer, they talk right. about you know, some of the success you've had. Can you give me a little more detail from your side? Like, what was that construction process like and how did you kind of, um, what, how did you maybe use their technology to speed up the process? Absolutely, that's a great question. So, Render provides a digital construction environment mm -hmm. where you take a blueprint for infrastructure and translate it into tasks that someone can go complete. Okay. And it's all done digitally, without paper. 
And so from an administrative perspective, what it allows you to do is maintain control of the project, but really decentralize the execution. So that way you can you know, delegate a lot of responsibility to the construction foreman, to the construction worker, to operate as efficiently as possible. So um, having that digital environment where we can make decisions, um, skip over problems and go build the next line where it made sense, really gave us the flexibility that we needed to move quickly. And it was, a, it was the member need that was driving us to move quickly when we realized how big the need was. Yeah, yeah, now, and, and what was the initial, like, so your, your initial outlay, I, as I understand it, was you were, you were aiming to hit like 5,000 homes, you know, with some sort of service. And then, it, and then it, and now you're at how many? Yeah, so we, we, we're almost at 13,000 active subscribers right now. Active subscribers, okay, right. so you're but passing we, the, more, more homes than that, we passed right? nearly 27,000 homes at this okay. point, and we continue to look for opportunities to expand um, into new markets. But um, yeah, so you know, we started off with a fixed wireless product to just hit the most critical areas of, uh -huh. of our membership, and then quickly pivoted and started building fiber with home everywhere. We actually. Uh, went through a merger and acquisition. We bought one of our um, local service providers that was offering a, a copper network, a okay. cable network, and we converted all those customers to fiber. And so at the end of the day, we finished the project about 18 months ahead of schedule and ended up passing um, thousands of more homes than we had originally planned. Well, that's, that's well, it, I, the reason I think this is remarkable is because if, if I'm not mistaken, you guys have never built a fiber network before, right? right. Or at least not one that serves customers directly. You might have built it for your own needs, you know, communicating sure. to offices and stuff. I mean, how, was that an intimidating process or, you know, like, or do you just, you don't know what you don't know? <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, well, we, we built infrastructure for a long time and I think we understood the scale of the project. And because the scale was daunting, we made a lot of specific choices up front to try to streamline the process. Okay. Um, so Render, for example, provided us a flexible digital work environment uh, we also partnered with uh, a material provider who is willing to locate warehousing in our territory, um, provide a lot of turnkey support, so that way we had the resources that we needed to take on such a huge project. Um, the support you know, from the communities was also a huge enabler. When you have those, those communities involved in the process and uh, willing to help, it, it definitely uh, gives you the motivation to get a job like that done. Yeah, indeed. What is the um, what does the service plan look like now? Like when someone buys service from you, are we talking? You know, is it competitive to the rest of the nation, or you know, where, where are we at there? Yeah, we we think we're really competitive, and we offer you know some secondary and tertiary products uh, beyond uh, the broadband connection at this point. So we have three product offerings: a hundred symmetrical, five hundred symmetrical, and a gig symmetrical. No data caps, no throttling. Uh, and the price points there, if we're keeping up, is uh, 69, uh, 84, and just under 100. Um, and you know, looking for ways to maintain sustainability long term, uh, we've we've partnered with other electrical cooperatives in the state to form a middle mile company. I really think that's an opportunity for us to shave some operational overhead. You know, wholesale costs are our second highest cost of doing business and really looking forward to drive that down to remain competitive in this landscape. And in the wholesale cost, you're leasing middle mile fiber from uh, established uh, telcos or other providers that already have the fiber, right? Yeah, that's right. And, and well, actually right now, you know, we just uh, connect with a tier one or a tier two, and they sell okay. us wholesale bandwidth directly. Uh, or they provide us a lit service back to an NFL city like Atlanta or Dallas in order to buy that content uh, from an internet exchange. And so, uh, you know, in order to find some efficiencies and, and to gain um, some savings, we've aggregated our needs in the state of Arkansas, uh, get a little collective buying power, and we're, we're working to bring that internet content to the state of Arkansas directly. So, do you think that'll catch that model will catch on in other states as well, or is that, or is that something that's already going? It's, it's the mo momentum is gaining absolutely. Okay. Um, you hear of projects, you know, like Seven States Fiber. In Tennessee, yeah. uh, we're working with uh, the cooperatives in Mississippi presently. There's others uh, who've, who've you know replicated this model or are engaged in similar models, particularly with electrical cooperatives, because right. we're used to doing business together. You know, right. one of our principles is cooperation amongst cooperatives, right. and so we're used to having to pull our resources to get the job done. And excited about this project with Diamond State, it's a uh, one one of a kind in the state of Arkansas. We're building uh, 42 channels, each capable of 800 gigabits per second. You can hop on or off in 71 of 75 counties in the state of Arkansas. 
and and you know end to end uh, traffic across the state like we've never seen before. So wow, a great yeah, that, project. That is interesting. What what is the timeline on that? So we've uh, we've connected our first circuit and it runs from uh, the central part of the state and Little Rock up to Jonesboro and over to Fayetteville and. Uh, so we're about 20% complete, and okay. over the next 12, 18 months, I think we're going to really light the rest of the state and the rest of our circuits. And that so. will provide you wholesale income, or will that just be for running the electrical part of the, you know, the, the our, Yeah, so our, our primary mission with that organization is to make Arkansas the most connected state in the country. And okay. it's, it's ambitious, yeah. uh, given that we're, you know, in the 40s of 50 presently. Yeah. But we want to bring connectivity for everyone, you know, public organizations, other service providers. Uh, but, you know, we're going to start by aggregating the cooperative's needs in terms of bandwidth and content and, and sharing that amongst ourselves and then expand from there over the next year or two. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, the uh, uh, what, what are your plans in terms of um, the the influx of funding that's coming in from government sources like the BEAT program and, and that. I, I know right. you guys were already RDOF participants uh, somewhere along the way. So uh, do you have expansion plans that go beyond, you know, what you've done so far? Yeah, I think if that if those funding sources can align with our mission of building connectivity in the state of Arkansas, then we want to pursue them. Um, we also, though, know that the need is now. And yeah. so uh, it's a balancing act to make sure that you're positioned to receive the funding, but that it doesn't you know, hold up your plans to build what is needed. And so we're trying to balance that right now and analyze opportunities for partnerships on the funding uh, and, and to do what's right for our organizations. All right, Jeremiah Sloan, thanks so much for uh, making the time and uh, best of luck on, the, on, on connecting all of Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right.